just a little bit in my ears. I hear you. Yep. I think her. Yeah, that's good. I'm good. Oh, that's a plot. Look at you. This is uh, the crowd welcoming Mark back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Mark. Hey, it's good to be back, Justin. <laughs> Not yes, that indeed. anyone knows you were gone. Yeah. They maybe know. Cause we know. I released the Encore episode instead because uh, we, were, we were busy. <laughs> we couldn't record that. <laughs> We, uh, maybe we wouldn't have known, but he is like, right. haven't we heard this before? That's right. This sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> maybe it did. Maybe it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all new material. Sometimes well, when you know, my uh, Chris and I will have that difference. It's like we've seen this show before. I'll say it's like, oh, yeah. you know, because yeah. You say you haven't, or you say you have. I say you have, and Chris will t- typically say, "No, I don't think we've seen this before." Yeah. you know, it's just yeah, it's kind of once. It's she yeah. can she can read books multiple times too. I I uh, have no use to read a book. Yeah, twice. or movies. I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Or it has to be. A, I like have Brave. to have forgotten most of it. And or like I'm a movie back. like Braveheart or yeah. Patriot, you could watch that mm-hmm. over again. I think so. Yeah, but. Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. I can think of, you know, five movies that I'd watch again, but... Five? Probably. What are they? Uh, Well, Braveheart, (laughs) Patriot. Yep. Gladiator? um, Gladiator would be one, and then um, Guardian. It's, it was the one good movie that uh, that that uh, of Aston, the Aston Kusher did. <laughs> Is it, well, uh, uh, he, oh, where he's a Mel swimmer, G- or something. swimmer with the Coast Guard. Yeah, yeah. I never saw that one. Oh, uh, that's that's it's a little hokey, you know, depending on your terminology at the end, because it's like you know the guy lives on forever uh, in the water. Mm. But there's a lot of good, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff. So that's like I say, that Guardian. would be so, that would be top four. Yeah. I can't necessarily think of what the fifth one would be. Uh, Maverick, uh, Top Gun uh, Maverick yeah. could be because yeah. that, yeah, that yeah. that could kind of complete my top five. Yeah, just because it was you know mm-hmm. very you know straightforward. Yeah, but yet action you know, packed, action packed, but yet it wasn't you know far right, far left. It mm-hmm. was just you know this good old fashioned yeah, romper this, yeah this anti you know it's like yeah i can probably there's a little bit of me that can appeal to that anti-government not following mm-hmm. the rules yeah. type. yeah no kidding <laughs> no kidding yes no kidding yeah. but yeah so that would be my top five nice yours i don't i don't think i have a top five really although you mentioned braveheart and yeah. patriot <clears throat> and i mentioned gladiator and those I definitely would watch again. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's that okay. You feels can share like my cheating. top yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen Guardians. So I can't speak to that. And okay. uh, Maverick, I really enjoy, but I don't know that I'd put it in my top five. I hear you. But maybe if I watched it again in five years, I'd be like, yeah, that definitely belongs in top five. But yeah, yeah as of right now, maybe yeah. not. And I, I, I would say the, uh, the whole. You know, uh, the way they tied the previous movie and the second yeah. movie together, you know, yeah. it, that that kind of family systems yeah. type and the, you know, that 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 definitely probably had some appeal yeah. to me. Yeah, that know, makes sense. In, in the Rooster. Of, yes. And, uh, yes. What was his dad's name? Goose. Goose. Yeah. Goose. Yeah. Of course. Goose. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rooster and Goose. Yeah. We, yeah. I was thinking this morning, you know what? Uh, we could probably do a, a podcast on nicknames sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just thinking of that. Yeah. You know. Just, Should we do that one today instead? Nah. We'll stay with this one. You got this one. You got this one prepped. I'm ready to. I'm well, ready. would you say that your preference in movies is somewhat biased? Very much so. Why? Um, due to what? Because I think they appeal to like when I think of Braveheart, mm-hmm. I think of freedom mm-hmm. and what that costs. And... They'll never take our freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just that. But I would even say I would have a different bias or view, if you will, of what freedom looks like. Mm-hmm. You know, 
And yeah. I, and I and I think, you know, that's that's kind of what every movie or the difference between a movie's appeal is if it agrees, tends to agree with my personal bias, mm-hmm. it becomes more favorable to mm-hmm. me. You know, and that's why probably so many other movies don't necessarily appeal to me. Yeah. You know, in that whole scheme of things. But so yeah. Yeah. I would say my our, I would say our as people, but me personally, yeah, I would say my personal bias kind of ties into what makes something favorable. Yeah. Or an idea. Yeah. 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 So there's an interesting thing about bias that's pretty common, uh, I think, among people, right? Sure. <clears throat> Is that I think we often believe that me personally, mm-hmm. of all the people, yes. are, it, I am the least biased, right? Like sure. that, that tends to be the bias that we have. Exactly. Uh, that I am the least biased. I have the the most, you know, collection of the most truth. Yes. Or access to it, right? Like, and so therefore my decisions are less biased. You know, my, my perception sure. of my decisions are less biased than, yep. than others. Um. And, you know, there's something, something about that. Like, I think if we all think that, I guess probably one of us isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, it's kind there's of like... There's probably one that's right. <laughs> it's kind of like that aspect. There's three sides to every story. Yeah. Yours, mine, and the truth. Yeah, really. yeah, there, yeah. There is a truth of yeah. what happened, but yet we're not going to know that. Yeah. You know, in the context of an interaction between two people, because your biases are going to help you hold on to certain dynamics or tenets of that interaction that you agreed with or aligned with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a different viewpoint just because those tenets Mm -hmm. that were important to me are different. And Mm -hmm. I believe that comes out of our bias. Yeah. And I think, you know, part of that is the ability to, you know, recognize that or. Yeah. I think when we're able to see that Mm -hmm. or acknowledge that as individuals, then I think it makes the conversation easier. Yeah, because I'm, but you're you're able to speak to that bias that you can see in me, and I can see in you. Mm -hmm. Because even better when I can speak to my own bias and vice versa. Oh, sure. Or not better, but also beneficial to be able to recognize and speak to it and address it. And yeah, right. Getting it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the thing about biases is that everyone has them, and a bias Mm -hmm. is simply a perspective, right? I think, or a leaning of perspective. Sure, I give you that. that, um, There's probably a more scientific way to describe it. Right. There's actual term called cognitive bias. Sure. um, And I'm actually staring at the the Wikipedia page right now. You know... (laughs) This is a side thing, but yes, I could tell. Wikipedia is pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, and <laughs> as a whole, <laughs> I feel like I hear I you hear a bias. I hear Did you hear bias. a bias? I there? do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I think, I, oh man, I think I, I, I would understand based on who Mark is what that that bias would be. But just think about the fact that there's this resource that's available to anyone at any time. Yeah. That if I want to learn about cognitive bias. Right. I can just go on Wikipedia and read about it. Now, that information might be biased. And that <laughs> would be Mark's bias. <laughs> yes. It's but, like uh, I could go on Wikipedia right now, not literally, yeah. but figuratively speaking, an individual could and go and write on Wikipedia about you know, mm-hmm. cognitive bias, and we'd be reading it as if it were factual. Should we do that? <laughs> we don't have enough time to do that. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Maybe part two, we'll go edit the cognitive bias page and kind of make up our own version and see how long it lasts. It would be interesting to see what, not safeguards, but you yeah. know, if you could just go yeah. in. If there are, I mean, I'm sure there's there are a editors, system. moderators, yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, as far as I know, uh, that's good and bad too, right? Yeah, like, cause sure. Because there's some gate, they have gate a bias keeping as that well. kind of goes on, right? Yeah. 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 But all that being said, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I would give you that. It is a because I don't own a set of encyclopedias anymore, and if I did, they'd be out of date because yeah. that's the nature of encyclopedias, especially in today's insanely insane moving 
pace. You I know? can honestly say it was about six months ago I got rid of a uh, hmm. a copy of encyclopedias, a set. What was the year? Uh, I want to say it was late sixties, early, you know, early seventies type thing. It was a, it was a, it was a family yeah. connection, you know, a grandparents, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, set. Gotcha. But yeah. It'd be interesting to, like we have time, but to review it and see where we got things wrong, you know, where you oh, know, sure. the editors got things wrong. Cause you know, bias. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, bias. I I see it as, and of course, of course I do. I see it as a stick thing, right? Oh, of course you do. <laughs> I like that. Of course you do. Yes, you would see that as a stick thing. Yes, right. But there's like there's there's, it's not a bad thing. It just is a thing. It is a thing. It yes. is a thing that everyone has a bias. It has yes. bias one way or another in any given subject or, hmm. you know, area. It just is a thing. You can't sure. remove it. You can't extract it. Um, mm. But what you can do is try and keep it balanced. Recognize where the, mm. you know, keep that stick balanced. Recognize where the bias tends to make you do the wrong things. And by wrong, mm. I mean spiritually or morally, right? Uh, judgment, for instance. Sure. Or, um, yeah, I don't know. What was that, that being said in that context. You don't like my stick? I do like your stick. But how do you how do you go about confirming or denying the stick? In other words, the bias. When you're thinking about, you know, what that bias is, or when when you say it is, and we can be too far in one direction or the other, how do you acknowledge that, or how do you recognize? when biases are too far in the, because if yeah. we're not fully aware. Yeah. Well, I mean, what source are you? I, I feel like the answer to that is not unique to this episode. And, and what mm. I mean by that is I feel like we've talked about that a lot, I hear you. you know, through changing our mind is an episode where we oh, talk sure. about that. Um, I feel like even integrity talked about that a little bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of an ongoing theme of, how to do that. Um, so I don't think I'd have anything novel to add to that, but sure. I'd be curious if you did in the sense of something came to your mind, which is why you asked the question. Well, I think for me, the, the, the part of <clears throat> number one, being able to recognize that I have them and number two, being able to have a relationship, you know, number one with God, but then with other people who are able to speak into those biases yeah because i think you know in that whole context when i think i'm right yeah yep that's that's that can be a dangerous territory yeah. that's where the stick is out of balance in my opinion and the bias right. becomes problematic is and that's that's where we need that humility to know to know and i think it'd be interesting um to go through some of these biases yeah yeah uh, at some point but just to wrap you know finish what you were saying but i what were you saying? <laughs> How, that we need in order the fact that we have relationship. Yeah, we need. I mean, biases. We need relationship yeah. in our lives to help us recognize when our biases get too far. Mm -hmm. Where I'm, I'm the only person in this group of ten people that knows the right answer, and mm -hmm. the rest of you have no clue. Yeah, you know, because a bias right. can get that far. Yeah. And I think, you yeah. know, being able to have those other people yep. who are able to say, well, what, you know, what about this? Yeah. Have you thought of it this way? And that's not to say that we always have to have full on agreement, mm -hmm. but I think we can recognize that I may not always be as right as I think I am. Right. Yep, and again, that's just the most common thread in all of our episodes is kind of that middle ground of having the conversation to, to mm. move us from our polarized perspectives. Sure. I mean, that's that polarizing perspective is a bias, right? So sure. I guess this is kind of a, the epicenter of what we discuss. Sure. Um, but yeah, like that's that's where it's beneficial to have a bias in that there's mm. iron sharpening iron. Right. Sure. In my bias, though biased, can mm -hmm. still help balance yours. Right. Sure. And yeah. that doesn't mean 
I got it all right, but it does mean I can potentially help others um, modify their bias. You know what I mean? I think that's Mm -hmm. where, again, iron sharpens iron. We kind of sharpen each other and kind of knock down some of the rough edges. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So do you want to go through some of these? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) Me too. I'm so excited. There is a page on Wikipedia called List of Cognitive Biases, (laughs) (laughs) and it's some, some nerdy stuff. And it's wow. really fun and it's pretty long. We're not going to go through all of these, but we're just going to like touch on some of them. Um, there's some uh, higher level topics and then they break them down into some specifically named sure. biases. So like anchoring bias is a higher level. Mm. Apophenia, we'll get to that. That's a higher level. Availability, heuristic. I'm just looking forward to you pronouncing some of these words. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> Cognitive dissonance, which is... I always like that phrase, and mm-hmm. I, I use it probably more than I should because I'm. <laughs> you nerd. like the word. <laughs> yeah, I do. Confirmation bias. Sure. Which is also, man, that's a good one. Egocentric bias, extension neglect, false priors, framing effect. Oh my. Logical fallacy, which we've all heard of li- logical fallacy. Uh, sure. We've all heard of the. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Prospect theory, self assessment, truth judgment, other. <laughs> Nice. There's so, even a category for other. You, oh, and there's you, you more. Scroll, oh my scroll by so quick. Yeah. So that, but then we get into other. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. So we're just going to pick and choose based on our there's own. Been our a lot of re- there's been a lot of writing that has been yeah. done. <laughs> yes. On, uh, Clearly psychologists on... <laughs> enjoy this subject, <laughs> which makes sense, right? Sure. Like you sit down to talk to someone, like you hear their story and you go, hmm. Hmm. That doesn't sound right. What is causing them to, what is the weight, right? That's sure. pushing them towards that thought or that that mm-hmm. way of being, right? Yeah. And so it makes a lot of sense that there'd be a lot of thought put into this. Um, sure. Yeah. I was thinking of that first one, anchoring bias. Yes, anchoring bias. Should well, I read the description real quick? What, what comes to, I'm curious what okay. comes to your mind when you think about. Anchoring bias. I that. think of it as, well, I'm anchored here. A kind of that uh, maybe like sunk cost fallacy. Oh. Maybe well, uh, maybe that's a stretch. But this idea that, well, I'm already kind of stuck to this thing. And so I have to make everything fit to it because I can't move from here. Does I gotcha. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of what I think. Yeah. What about you? Well, is that, uh, I apologize, I don't have the, but I know it's in Hebrews. Okay. That verse that we have, <clears throat> we have this hope as an anchor, mm. you know. And that's to where I would, I would say there are people out there who would see Christianity even oh, yeah. as a bias, as an point, anchoring bias, yeah, as an anchor, you know, which it should be. It can, yes, no, it should be. I hear if, you. If you're, if you believe the words that Jesus said, then you should bias. You should sure. anchor on what he said, right? Sure. Like that that is exactly what we believe you should do. Right. Right. Yeah. And yet, uh, there would be those who would say right. that, well, you're stuck there. Correct. You're trapped there. Yes. That, yep. that is a, yep. you know. that Again, that's what, I agree with you. <laughs> that, I, again, that's what I think a goal for this episode would be to understand that it is. Sure. There's no, there is no denying it. It is everywhere. But also, it doesn't necessarily mean... It's bad, right? So understanding yeah. where those biases are based on things that you want to be biased about, like there's you a know, purpose anchoring in the to, bias. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good example. Well, I, yeah. I, I appreciate you kind of bringing in the the, the positive <laughs> side because I never would have gone there. Ah, that's all right. That was interesting. That's why we do this. But again, not positive different. for all. Like some people see that, as, no, like no. you said, kind of a weakness yeah. or a uh, an anchoring in an yeah. unhealthy way. Yep, and potentially. For some, it is. Yeah. I guess certain theology maybe becomes an anchoring bias that's problematic. Sure. Right. Yeah. And the ability to think about in those, in you would see an anchor as a unnecessary, we would typically see an anchor as an unnecessary weight. Yeah. At times. But in yeah. the midst of a storm in a yeah. ship, you know, it's yeah. what keeps you from yeah. crashing into, yeah. you know, the shore. And it's just kind of a, mm-hmm. yeah, here mm-hmm. again. Yeah, it's good stuff. Two perspectives. Yeah. Or yeah. That one dynamic, that one word yeah. can have a lot of context involved. Yeah. Yeah. Anchoring bias. 
so the official yes. definition of I it. I can't read that. You know that from where you, I can no, zoom no. in more. Oh no, it's good. You're 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 in charge of the. Uh, yes, but I, I am going to zoom in more. Oh, look at so that. I want, I want you to be able to see, Mark. But oh, I will I can read see. it. The anchoring bias or focalism is the tendency to rely too heavily or to anchor on one trait of or piece of information when making decisions. Uh, usually, parenthetically, usually the first piece of information acquired on that subject, mm. which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anchoring bias includes or involves the following. Then they have four other, you know, names, common source bias, cons- conservatism bias, um, functional fixedness law of the, in law of the instrument. A law of the instrument is essentially if you hammer, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could break down some of these, but I think it'd be fun to kind of move on. Uh, unless, I agree. Unless it, yeah, cool. No, nothing, nothing. To, yeah. So the next one, what do you think of when you hear a- <laughs> apophenia? <laughs> you know what I honestly think of? It's <laughs> no, like, but, I think of like Greek, Greek mythology. Yeah. You know, that's a perfect name <laughs> yeah. for, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Apophenia, the warrior princess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what came to yeah. mind for me. When the Apophenia. god of thunder. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like the goddess of apologies. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that first part of the name has Apo. You know, it's apologies. She's the goddess of apologies. That's good. Yes, thank you for that. I can admit when I was wrong. That's right. I can admit when my bias was not correct. There you go. You have Apophenia. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Apophenia. <laughs> All right. The tendency to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated things, like mm. connecting a Greek goddess with the word <laughs> apophenia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so more like uh, difference between correlation yeah. and causation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Assuming that correlation is causation. Yeah. Two it, things yeah. happen yeah. At, this, at the same time. Therefore, they're related. Yeah. But I may have mentioned it on this podcast before but there's a website did do have we talked about this about correlation so yeah yeah like ice cream and crime right right it's like yeah. number of pools installed in the united states correlates with the number of stabbing deaths right oh, sure so it's like the the chart you they draw this chart is like over the course of time the the, the rate is exactly sure. the same therefore right exactly and it's a it's just a website that's full of those right like sure. four of those correlations uh, yeah. it's called ah it's called spurious correlations there you go yeah. nice job way yeah. to bring that up yeah so google that because it's it's pretty funny yeah uh, i bet and it makes it really man it really makes you look at this uh, apophenia. Uh, it's called clustering illusion, by the way. Um, but yeah, co- correlation is not causation. Same kind of idea. But it really makes you go, oh, I bet I've fallen prey mm. to that before. Sure. Because especially if you have an anchor, if you have, because mm-hmm. biases sometimes stack, right? So sure. if I have an anchoring bias where... I tend to lean towards, like, for instance, conservatism. They yeah. mentioned that as one. Sure. Or it could be liberalism, but kind of that bias. I lean that direction. And then I see a chart that says, you know, when Republican presidents are elected, you know, war looks like this. And da, I, gotcha. da, 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 da. I, I You know, I may have a tendency to believe or disbelieve it based on that chart. And right. Or, sure. Uh, anyway, that chart can be very weigh, weighing in my argument, right? Yep. Where it could just be. One of those situations, right? Yeah. But I, I was thinking about this in a context of relationship. You know, how often do we hear, you know, somebody will do something, you know, whether it's eye roll isn't a good example. It's the first thing that came to mind, mm-hmm. but you know, you put your hand underneath your chin, for example. Oh, no. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. You follow me? Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's definitely yeah. a, you yeah. know, a bias that's like, no, yeah. you don't know what somebody's yeah. thinking. They, they may have a body language, right. but we can't know what someone is thinking just right. based on the fact that they have done something yeah. prior to. So That could be a spurious correlation yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, another one in that same t- uh, subject is illusory correlation, a tendency to inaccurately perceive a relationship between two unrelated events. Sure. So that's just kind of, yeah, I'm making stuff up at that point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's like, uh, you know, I ate a bagel and a cop pulled me over. There you go. You know, so never eat bagels. Or I guess a common thing there would be uh, superstitions, right? Like oh, sure. baseball guys, right? Like yeah. they, they're the Don't change your socks. Right. Don't, Don't wash change your socks. socks. Yeah, exactly. Basketball players do that too. Come on. Yeah, well, Justin. all sports, but yeah. 
Excuse me. I'm biased against yeah, baseball. Exactly. <laughs> no, but yeah, I think that's a good example of illusory correlation. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. When I did that, this other thing happened. Therefore, I have to keep doing that. Yeah. Exactly. I'm looking forward to you pronouncing that next one. <laughs> Paradolia. <laughs> I have, I have no idea how you say Sounds it. Sounds like the storm that just went by us yeah. with a P in front of it. What no. was that storm? Adelia. The, Adelia, the storm Adelia, that we, yeah. yeah. I don't Adelia. think there was a P. Oh, yeah, yeah you're saying it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Pareidolia, a tendency to perceive a vague and random stimulus, often yep. an image or a sound, as significant. Mm. For example, seeing images of animals or faces in the clouds. Um, this Man made me think, moon. yeah, this made me think of people, you've seen those articles where someone sees like, the mother mary in stucco oh. yeah 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 <laughs> or like toast elvis yes. is on the toast right yes this no is, doubt yeah 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 i think that's pareidolia that's fair enough have you ever Man. seen elvis in the toast i have not mm, i really i, I really don't eat much toast okay all yeah right, all right yeah what I'm about, what about your kid. burger <laughs> no okay i eat burgers but yeah, yeah i haven't seen yeah, yeah, me either. I don't think I've ever I don't seen know if anything I'm in hard any enough. food product. Yeah. I, I mean, other I think than... I need to look harder. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have a little the clouds. Now, the clouds, I can see stuff yeah. in the clouds. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Well, we're kind of uh, biased towards that based on children's books and upbringings mm. and stories. and Yeah. Right? I think it would, would, would it be fair to say you would have a, a certain bias if someone told you they saw like Mona Lisa in their toast? Would you have a certain bias about that? I d- probably, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. That's, that's too deep. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I, yeah. Or, oh. I think it does define. Yeah. I was sharing that story about the eagle. Oh, yeah. Earlier, you know, and it's oh, like yeah. that That would be, you know, certain people have a certain bias to, you know, like end of life type dynamics that this means that that is that person. Yeah. When it's like in reality for me, that's not necessarily that person, but that's not to say that God couldn't put an eagle in the sky. Right. You know, at a moment that would say, hey, yeah, I know you're thinking about this person, mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily that person. That yeah. would be, yeah. Huh. That's what made that made me think yeah. of that. What's that called again? Someone comes back. It's uh, a different thing. Oh, reincarnation. Yeah, reincarnation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably a bias of some sort. No, <laughs> no, that's uh, that's different. All right, moving on. Availability heuristic. Yes. Which before reading this, what do you think that means? Oh, availability heuristic. Boy, I should know these base words. But um, should you? I, don't know. I yeah, guess heuristic. It sounds like you know humanitarian, like people groups, yeah, type thing to me. But I could be wrong. Yeah, I forget what the word. Here. Uh, I'm just looking available. Yeah, yeah. I think heuristic is just like a. Is that another word for bias or I viewpoint? Okay, hang on. So I'm yeah, I don't up. know. But here's, I, I think heuristic is just like concept. Okay. So another Fine. another word for bias. Yeah. Yeah. Which it said. Viewpoint. Yeah. Define heuristic. There you go. Enabling someone to discover or learn something for themselves. Oh. So it's a an A heuristic process or It's method. an opportunity. Enabling someone to discover and learn something for them. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. So, so availability. <laughs> so what do you think that implies? The availability to learn. Uh, the availability to learn something for myself. Okay. That's how I'm defining. You think that's, but what's the bias? Oh, that I have the ability mm. to learn something. I think, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Yours is going to be the other end of the spectrum. I'm thinking, but go <laughs> that's ahead. Right. That's right. Uh, I think it has more to do with, I believe the things that I ha- have available to me to check and learn. Oh, but sure. I don't believe the things I don't. Yeah, if someone has a completely different experience than mine, right? But well, maybe grew- they like maybe they grew up uh, in California. Yeah, I don't know, and they understand that culture. I oh, man, that's a stretch. Let's go more simply and say someone has access to a telescope, so they can say, "Well, you know, mm-hmm. Mars is going to crash into the Earth," and I go, "Well, I don't believe you." Sure, because it doesn't line up with the things I 
no, and also I don't have the avail. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that feels like a stretch. But. No, no, I hear where you're coming from. Just like I like, if I I can't like the way I grew up. Prove what I what you're saying. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. If I don't have availability to to believe it or know it, then yeah. it can't be true. If you grew up in a in a good school district where there wasn't a lot of violence, you'd have a hard time mm-hmm. believing somebody was actually almost mugged or or almost knifed in their school. Yeah. Because that's just not your experience. Mm-hmm. And it would be hard for you to imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't happen. Right. Yeah. To where yeah. it would be yeah. so foreign, yes. you'd say, no, didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, making it up. Yeah. Yeah. You're biased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that being said. It's this tendency to overestimate the likelihood of events with great... Oh, this is different. <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> we should mention when we talk about what we think it is. <laughs> yeah. Very much what we think it is. It's, this, is uh, it, and it, this is our version of Wikipedia. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should edit this later. Uh, it's a tendency to o- <clears throat> overestimate the likelihood of events with greater availability in memory, which can be influenced by how recent the memories are or how, okay. how unusual or emotionally charged they may be. Which makes me think about trauma, right? Oh, sure. Makes us believe that trauma is that is very eminent, right? That the yeah. same trauma is, is around every corner, the boogeyman around every corner, yeah. but the, the actual uh, percentage chance, the uh, odds of that thing happening again are slim to none, right? But like, because of the s- situations I grew up in, I was, yep. you know, that opportunity of for that trauma was open to me in a way that is very unique and unlikely to be repeated. And yet... Sure. It stands out. It's such a strong, like you said, stands out in the timeline, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's not like it happened yesterday. I mean, it's not like it happened 20 years ago. It's like right. it happened yesterday, every exactly. day of my life. And therefore, yep. it's that availability that tends to cause me to be biased towards, yeah, that thing can happen sure. again. Yeah. Right? Is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You think no. that applies? I, I, I'm, I think that applies. And I'm thinking about the first one as the anchoring bias. And I'm thinking about this one as the most recent. Yeah. Cause typically, yeah. typically when we remember things, we re if, if we're remember, if we're trying to memorize a list, yeah, I was assuming recency bias would be in here, but I don't see it, but, but yeah, I, I think, think that's right. a part of it. Yeah. You know, the, the available, is the, no, this one is about most recent. We can always remember the things at the beginning of a list and the end of a list. Yes. Yeah. So this one's the most recent where anchoring is one of our primary ones yeah. that we'll first hear. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Think about that way. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. 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 It's like the the bookends. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So this reminds me. So what what maybe put this topic on the list in the first place was re, uh, listening to this podcast by um, with the guest being Daniel Kahneman. Okay. So Daniel Kahneman, he won a Nobel Prize for for economics or something, but he's not an he's not an, an economist, which okay. is interesting, and that's kind of a joke he always talks about. They ask him an economics question, he's like, I don't know, I'm not an economist. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, he's done a ton of studies on bias. Okay. And so one of the things, and he has books. One is called Thinking Fast and Slow. The most recent one is, recent one is called Noise. I haven't read them, but mm. I, I kind of want to. Um, but he talks about how this, like how much we think we're right, but our biases, and we don't realize our biases. So mm. uh, he talks about one of the studies they did was um, this idea of kind of recency bias and traumatic bias. Like the things, he, he basically said, what we remember is the worst part in the last part. Okay, so, sure. And they did this study. It's so interesting. Uh, people getting colonoscopies. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And he basically said, you know, this whole experience is terrible for people. You know, this tube going on, whatever, right? Like, <laughs> and it's painful. This tube painful. going where? <laughs> yeah. Up, up. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's up there and it's painful and it's terrible. And the whole experience is terrible, he said. But they, their hypothesis was... Essentially, well, they didn't have a <laughs> hypothesis. They studied a bunch of things, and they found out that people rated the experience. Oh, that's what they did. They would check every minute. How are you feeling? How do you think this experience is now? Or basically, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, and then they would do, follow up and say, "How do you think the overall, experience, you know, this whole thing, right?" And mm-hmm. they found out that people, despite how long it was or how um, short it was. They gauged it on how bad it was based on the worst moment and the last moment, mm. right? 
Okay. And, and it was really interesting because he basically said what they found out is if they extended the procedure a minute, mm-hmm. but stopped the movement of the thing. So right mm-hmm. at the very end, right? Like, yeah. And just left it wherever for a minute. <laughs> uh, they generally rated the whole experience higher, no matter what. Oh, wow. Right? Because that last part wasn't so bad. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, and we'll probably get to the, I guess that's, uh, I'm trying to think. This sounds like maybe the tra- trauma part is kind of the worst part. And then, like you said, yeah, the recency bias. But Well, I think it's interesting in that part, they, they talk about emotionally, you know, how the emotions of a moment. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, so often that's, that's what creates the memory if you will, is our ability yeah. to have an experience and yeah. there's an emotion tied yeah. to it. That's what creates that fold yeah. in the brain. And of course that creates that as a memory. Mm. So like you say, it makes sense that we would have these biases and in, in part based on the emotion mm-hmm. that we felt of how terrible or how awful or bad, yeah. you know, uncomfortable yeah. an experience was yeah. emotionally as well. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how our brains work. But yeah, so there's there's a bunch of sub ones under here. Um, I'll just pick one. Selection bias, which happens when the members of a statistical sample are not chosen completely at random, which leads to the sample not being representative of the population. Sure. So that's like essentially I'm picking a quote unquote random sampling, but I happen to like people without beards. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't realize it, right? And yeah. so it turns out there's no beards on the... And on the panel or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, often that happens with, you know, uh, panels where there's not enough women representation. That's been a pretty big thing. And I would say in the tech world, sure. and sure. I, I'd say that shifted a lot in the last 10 years. But for a while there, it was like, uh, that became a pretty strong signal of, you know, selection bias. Like, mm, yeah, all the tech dudes want to listen to tech dudes and, you know, that yes. kind of thing. So I think that's interesting. Is there any others on here you want to look at? Yeah, I was thinking, I was looking at that. I was trying not to have to pronounce it, but I was looking at that. Let me try it. Let me add it. (laughs) Okay. The second one down. Anthropomorphism. Yeah. 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 That one's a good one. Yeah. The tendency to characterize animals, objects, and abstract concepts as possessing human-like traits, Mm -hmm. emotions, and intentions. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what the whole uh, pet food, pet industry is based on from my perspective yeah yes that, making you know, it like you're a cute little child yes yeah yeah That's i just good. yeah, yeah. and then it says the opposite bias of yeah. not attributing feelings or thoughts to another person is dehumanized perception, a type of objectification. Yeah. And that's like often what happens when looking at too much porn, right? Like sure. we've talked about this before or whatever, yeah. but like you tend to stop thinking of that person as a person yeah. and thinking of more of as an object, right? Yeah. And objectification occurs and then that's, you know, objectification is a very big thing term yeah. in, in terms of looking at women and thinking, objectifying them, right? Yeah. And, and I think, think about that's that, that bias created. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it stems from, yeah, from, no that, from those yeah. choices, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the, another one I just read that I thought was interesting, survivorship bi- bias, mm. which is concentra- con- <laughs> concentrating on the people or things that survive some process and inadvertently overlooking those that did not because of their lack of visibility. Oh, wow. So it's like, huh? Yeah, I feel I can't think of an example of this, but well, I think, and here again, I I've don't heard it. Before. I think you know when we look back at you know different historical events, you know we can recognize uh-huh. you know certain groups of people died at certain things. Now we we're typically going to, the Holocaust is typically going to be at the top of that list, Mm. you know, from my perspective, Mm -hmm. you know, due to number, but that's not to say that there are, there weren't other people Mm. in history who also died, you know, but yet based on the Holocaust being more Mm. uh, recent, you know, we tend to think of it that way. And they're, yeah. and they're granted, there probably are other groups that we're just not yeah. aware of who have been, you yeah. know, killed over time, but it's not exactly the same, but I think, you know, we can tend to focus on that one group. Yeah. Understandably. So, 
Mm-hmm. You know, whereas uh, throughout history, I'm sure there are other groups, mm-hmm. you know, or people that have kind of faded away. Yeah, I also think it it's it's can go to something like mm-hmm. um, there's a there's a tribe in Africa, right, where a disease hits them, and everyone who hunts survives because they happen to have been out on the trail when this particular sure. thing hit. I don't. I'm just making stuff up. But I gotcha. like, when you know people go to research that group, they go, oh the only kind of people here are hunters, right? I got you. And so the survivors, that's probably a totally destroyed example, but you get the idea is like yeah. there's the, the survivors tends to be what is listened to and understood to be yep. the reality when really maybe it's not there. It doesn't represent yeah. the wholeness of the group. Yeah. 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 I'd give you that. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. All right. After um, all, this is, this is our version of Wikipedia bias. That's right. That's right. Because how I see it first. But we're not biased. So this is the trauma. <laughs> I can admit I'm biased. Yeah. Yeah. Strongly so in some areas. Oh, here's a good one. Yeah. I, I can't leave this topic. There's a bunch of them in here, but I'll, no this doubt. is the last one I'll do unless Mark pulls one out. But well traveled road effect mm. the tendency to underestimate the duration taken to traverse off traveled routes and overestimate the dur- duration taken to traverse less familiar routes. I have a perfect example of that. Go for Very it. Very recent one. Um, I've never sighted a house before. Okay. Okay. So my perception of how long that was going to take, you know, it was like, Big, big project, weeks, right, sure. kind of thing. And I did it in uh, the course of a couple of days uh, on our edition. So not like the whole house, but, you know. Yeah. And I just was like, this is not too bad. Like, it, go- it goes a lot faster than I thought it would. But my perception, because I've never traveled that road, is that it's going to be long. Every single time I go to paint something, yeah, I think this is going to be so quick. Oh, really? I w- so just to be clear. That's a that's a, tra- a road I traveled a lot. I was a house painter for ten years. Okay, this won't take long. Right. So, back to this house example. There's some fascia um, yeah. that's unpainted. So everything else is vinyl, but the the fascia was this hardy, unpainted. So it's like this yellow color, right? Oh yeah. So it needed to be painted white. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll go knock that out. It'll take me an hour. Just mm. buzz around, paint the fascia. I'll be done. It took me. Way longer than an hour. And I was just like, what in the world? Why is this taking this long? And it's not like, I wasn't going slow, but every single painting project I take on is exactly like that. Wow. It's always more painful and takes longer than I thought it would. Wow. So that's, so that painting sucks is the moral of the story. <laughs> that's my bias. That's fair enough. But that's an now, example that, now that came the, to my mind. In the context of this, just yeah, that road. Well, yeah, roads. I would say I have a bias that I would rather, I would tend to think that a new road, I would rather travel a road that I haven't traveled on before and think it got me there quicker Yeah. than maybe the old road that right. I've done time and time again. Yeah. And that's probably contrary to that's Chris's- That's probably a different bias. It is probably a different <laughs> but, bias, but I think Chris yeah. has that desire to travel- the new road. I mean, the, the old, old road because it's faster. Because it is really probably faster. Yeah. Although I'll view yeah. the new road as just being faster because yeah, it, it's and you're a change. both biased. Yeah, yeah you're, you're yeah, change biased. That's probably a thing in here. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of biases in this page. I'm sure that's change bias is one, but, but like that you're both biased. She thinks well the, the, the old one would be faster. You yep. think the new one's gonna be faster, but neither of those are good qualifications whether something's faster or not, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so it's, exactly. it is. Uh, that's a great example. Yeah, interesting. Fill it out. All right. So the next one, next subject. Ooh. cognitive dissonance. This is. Yeah, I, I really like this phrase. Yeah. So, what would you say? Cognitive dissonance. Don't look at the thing. We I, gotta, I, I, I was wasn't looking at the thing. <laughs> I was looking at the screen. I'm gonna but, shrink it back down. So. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just <kidding>. well, <laughs> dissonance is whenever two things are in. They don't align with one another. Yeah. There's a, yeah. I kind so, of think of it as like the the magnets when you put the options sure. and they kind of bounce away. Yeah. Is that? They, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, when, it's when my thoughts don't align. Yeah. Or my thoughts and my feelings may not align. It's emotional dissonance, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's when I'm, you know, so I'm thinking of in the context of when my thoughts don't align. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I always think I th- I feel like I hear the term cognitive dissonance a lot of times in like cultural and political type sure. conversations where uh what they believe doesn't align with the truth essentially is kind of how I come to understand it. But sure. I think it's probably Yeah, so let's let's read about it. Yeah. Because this is this is one of those things where I have uh, yeah uh, a li- li- well Lizzie's in the back of my mind uh, at this point. She said, you know, what she say? She's done. She's done a lot what of. What do study you have to say, Biden. Lizzie? Well, she's probably saying, "No, Dad, that's not exactly right." right. But it's close, you know. Like yeah. like she does. She's, yeah. she's our fact checker yeah. at times. And well, I, I'm looking I've, at Wikipedia, so it can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is no definition for cognitive dissonance. She would use dissonance. the next one, not, not confirmation bias. She's, you know, she, yes, she, I've yeah. heard her use that word. A oh, bunch yeah, of times. that yeah. one's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't jump I'm ahead. Not, I'm sorry. I Lizzie, did jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cognitive dissonance. So yep. the one, they don't have a def- definition, but we'll jump in. There's three of them. The first one's normalcy bias, a form mm. of cognitive dissonance, is the refusal to plan for or react to a disaster which has never happened before. Mm. Interesting. This mm-hmm. is very much uh, ties into the current uh, global warming or the, like the climate crisis situation, right? There's there's very to, much to the two degree sides. that there is a crisis. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There can't be it. There's never been. Yeah. So, but I think that's a good example of sure. Uh, you know, no matter where you fall on that, if it's true, sure, and you don't believe it's true, that's what that this is that right? Yeah. The normalcy bias. Like exactly. we've never had a climate crisis crisis yep. before, therefore it can't happen. Or the other expense. This is normal, but that's not necessarily normal bias. Yeah, that's a different one, probably. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So that's a good one. Um, and I think, too, like, there are people who move down here from the north. Yeah. <laughs> I was one of them. Where, having never experienced a hurricane, you're like, it can't be that bad. We we have sure. tornadoes in the Midwest, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, but it's just so different than a tornado. No, you know, no. it's, tornadoes are so much worse mm. in a localized way. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. But hurricanes are, you know, what's the word? Uh, not localized. <laughs> Not global, spread but yes. out. Yes, yeah. They hit yes. a, a big, a big area. And broader, broader. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and the sustained wind is mm. different, right? Where sure. a tornado is like, I mean, it's a tornado. It's like exactly. you think of a tornado, you think of Tasmanian devil, like, zzz, and then yeah. it's gone, and it's like the destruction's done. But um, the sustain. Anyway, the point <laughs> is. I think sometimes we come down and we think, oh, it can't be that bad. And we don't prepare. And it's like, holy crap, that was yeah. intense. Like, that was different than anything I've ever experienced. And next time, we're more willing to prepare for that storm. I've and, seen that. Unless the next couple times are kind of duds. <laughs> yes. And then we're then our more recency likely to, bias. Yes. yes. We're yes. more likely to say, yes. ah, yep. we can ride this one out. Yep. It's like, yeah. 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 It's funny how that plays into the yeah. storm patterns, these biases. Yeah. Yeah. It does. You know, uh, you know, we're halfway through this page, or, or not even. But I think hopefully you're starting to see, even in yourself, as you listen, like, yeah, I have a lot of these biases because they're sure. not, they're not nefarious, they're not evil. No. They just are, and they impact us in so many ways. And I yeah. think again, the important thing is to recognize that it is, and therefore try to uh, make uh, decisions on top of your biases to know sure. that they exist and therefore to at some point try to um, compensate for them. Right. Yeah. I was um, thinking about how tradition actually granted experience ties into our bias, but I think tradition, you know, yeah, the things that I learn yeah. from my, you know, f- help create my bias, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I would dare say even uh, like, uh, Chauvinism, mm-hmm. yep, would be a bias. Yeah, that I can learn. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's probably race, racism. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's probably yeah. a a a word in here. Something about uh passing. Down. What's the word for passing now? Transgenerational. No. Okay. No. Hereditary. Oh. <laughs> Hered- Hered- oh. Hereditary. Yeah. <laughs> bias. Yeah. Sure. It's probably in here somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, cognitive effort justification is a person's tendency to attribute greater value to an out- outcome if they had put effort into achieving it. So this is very much like the sunk cost fallacy, sure. I think. 
Um, ben Franklin effect. Ben Franklin effect, where a person who has performed a favor for someone is more likely to do another favor for that person than they would be if they had received a p- favor from that person. What? Where did uh, Ben Franklin come in? <laughs> We'd have to click that link. Uh, We're not going to do that. He's a, he was a, uh, what do you call that? Like a person that goes to another country and represents people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Me- not a mediator, but a um, foreign dignitary yeah. type. Yeah. Diplomat. Diplomat. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. That's, yeah. that's, that's what, yeah. That's my bias would say that's, that's where why that came he from. got that. I got yeah. you. That's why it's, yeah. yeah. He's a That's diplomat. interesting. Perform a favor for someone who's more likely to do another. So I, like, if I did you a favor for, I'm huh. more likely to do you another favor than if you had done me a favor, is yeah. what that's saying. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I recognize that, but it's, that's, it's not, that's it's, also. It's saying it's not necessarily a balanced yeah. thing, yeah. but it's, and I would dare say there there's certain people probably Ben Freeman Franklin, but I think of when I think of charismatic people, mm-hmm. you know, Jim Jones, that kind of thing. Those people who you just you just want to do things for. Mm, yeah. Because gotcha. it's like that person is the person. Mm. So who doesn't want to do something yeah. for that person? That would be yeah. that would be yeah. I also think maybe that ties into some codependence where Mm. You're the person I take care of, so I'm going to take care of you. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 All right. Confirmation Lizzie's bias. favorite. Well, according one, to of the Mark. Ones, one of the ones she definitely would use. Yes. yes. Confirmation bias. And I think, you know, most of our listeners probably know, would guess what that is, but what would you say that is? It's it's the it's the things that confirm my bias. It's like I tend to see those things that I find agreement with or that agree with my personal bias. Right. And it's giving more weight to those things. Oh, sure. Because okay. they agree. Sure. That's how I see it, right? Yeah. Uh, giving more weight to the things that agree with what I have to say because they agree with what I have to say. So in other yeah. words, I read 10 articles this month. Mm. I read... I, you don't remember the five that agreed with me and the other ones I kind of hand waved, right? Like, sure. well, they didn't really ask this expert. If so. you Googled them, they're all going to agree with you anyways, based on your search patterns. But That's right. <laughs> if you get into the right, uh, what called? silo. Bias. The silo, yes. yes. yes, yes. Si- would, silo bias. But that's bias. a bias on my part. It is against Google. Yeah. <laughs> so don't Google, folks. We've been over this. You should know this by now. <laughs> Only Wikipedia. That's, no, that's, Martin. That's my bias. That's a Don't bias look on my part. At a screen. That's the rule in Mark's uh, bias. <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, confirmation bias. That's a good one. Um, there's a few under here. Backfire effect. Mm. A tendency to react dis confirming evidence by strengthening oh one's previous beliefs. So I get more yeah. resolved. Yeah, like you proved me wrong and I go, mm, nice try, buddy. Yeah. I don't believe you. It's like trying to get me to uh, shave my beard by saying, what's that growing on your face? You know, I just get more resolute. <laughs> sure. Except they're not proving to you. It'd be more like saying, you see, because you have a beard, you have a food stuck in it. <laughs> like every time I see you, there's food stuck in your beard. You really should consider getting rid of it. Yeah. And you going, listen, buddy, I don't have food stuck in my beard. I want it there. It's, <laughs> it's not stuck. I chose to. <laughs> it's right. This was Saving a it for later. That is a, a choice. <laughs> but I think that's kind of no, right where yeah. you think this proof's going to really rock their world. And instead, they they, they double down. Yeah. 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 You could call it the double down effect. Good. Backfire. Yeah. Congruence bias, the tendency to test hypothesis exclusively through direct testing instead of testing positive possible alternative mm. hypothesis that's like a real crude example like every time i headache i take advil to prove that advil works to help me get rid of headaches mm. but i never take a walk i never drink more water sure whatever to see if maybe those are the problems it's like well it's because i need advil or whatever yeah uh, we're not sponsored by advil no. i mean uh ibuprofen <laughs> is that fair yeah that's a good one yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, some other word. Observer expectancy effect. When the researcher expects a given result and therefore unconsciously manipulates an experiment or misinterprets data mm. in order to find it. Yes. Yeah, so that's why they do double-blind testing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the, the whole thing there is 
the testees don't see the testers and the testers don't see the testees mm -hmm. and they kind of do it in a blind fashion and it's to avoid this observer yep. expectancy effect. Interesting. And it's random to the point I don't know yep. whether you're receiving it or maybe the placebo yeah. or yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's good stuff. Yep. <laughs> Should I try and pronounce this one? Sure. Semmelwise reflex. There you go. The, the tendency, tendency to reject new evidence that contradicts a paradigm. Now, yeah. I would like to know who Semmelweis was. That's got to be somebody's name. Do you want me looking? No, okay. but it's <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a cliffhanger. Yeah, <laughs> it's something we're gonna hang out there. <laughs> All right, next subject: extension neglect. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. He scrolled I down. Scrolled too far. Oh, there we go. Egocentric bias. Wow. Egocentric. So, yeah. 55 minutes, Mark. Yeah. So, I think we could go on and read these, and they're really fun, and I really want to, but I also yeah. feel like at some point your ears might, might start to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, maybe at some other point we can uh, discuss I think, more I think of it these, has... But. Yes, I think there is that part of us that could actually even look at this a little further and build it into our vocabulary as we're having how I see it yeah. in the process. Yeah, of like, time. oh, that's a whatever bias. Yeah, right? like a yeah. Simul Simulwise. Simulwise. Bias. Oh, come on. Oh, Don't Mark. Simulwise me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah. Demonstrating your cognitive dissonance they, once again. I'm just, just learning. Just learning. <laughs> I have the ability. But yeah, yeah but stuff. thanks, thanks for uh, yeah. initiating this, Justin. Yeah, yeah it's I, fun. I think it is good, and, and it's I I agree with you in that context. I think we have a number of biases that we may not always acknowledge. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the way we started off the program, but it was just kind of neat to be able to say, okay, yeah, here's some different ones. And granted, we may not have always uh, translated accurately, yeah. but this is a this is a podcast on how we see it how and what it, comes exactly. to mind. And yeah, so yeah, it's been fun, Justin. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for discussing these with me, and I encourage our listeners to look at. And we'll we'll post a link to some of these Wikipedia pages, and you know, maybe it's not as interesting. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I'm almost positive it's not. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, plenty of good stuff in there you can check out. I also encourage you to, you know, check out some podcasts with D Daniel Kahneman. He's a very interesting mm -hmm. guy. He talks about biases. I'm not saying everything he says is going to be true or whatever, but the, the, this con concept, the way he talks about it and describes it is um, kind of eye-opening. So Neat. Yeah. Thanks again, folks. This is how we see it. Hey. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.